Okay, so we've talked about the really complicated Van Gernoten function for water retention, and that's where we really can describe both the water retention and the hydraulic conductivity in well, one fell swoop in one set of five parameters. But sometimes we want to keep things simple, and we saw that with the Green and Amp kind of uh, solution, the, the simple descriptions can be very powerful. And one of the things that is uh, often needed is to describe how water moves in soil very simply. And so Gardner, um, in 1958, uh, came up with a really simple equation for hydraulic conductivity. He said, what if we call the hydraulic conductivity, and we're going to write it as a function of pressure, is going to be taken equal to the saturated conductivity times the exponential of some alpha again times h. So that's going to be how conductivity works. Well, you know, what, what, what does this mean here? Well, let's, take a go ahead, let's go ahead and take a look here at how this might plot up. So now, oftentimes, we had written the hydraulic conductivity as a function of theta. Okay? And what we recall is that at the saturated water content, the conductivity was also the saturated value. And then it would decline from there very abruptly and come to some sort of value of zero at some sort of residual water content. Okay? But now we want to try a slightly different approach. What we're saying is let's plot this whole thing up in terms of pressure and conductivity. Let's put, actually, let's put pressure on the bottom here, and let's put conductivity on the vertical axis. So our, we're going to switch variables. So now we're going to, again, plot conductivity. Now, what do you think? When pressure is zero, what is the value of hydraulic conductivity? Hmm, well, if we can get there, let's just cheat a little bit, and here sketch our very favorite thing, the water retention function. And here we have the saturated water content. And that happens at h equals zero. Aha! So when, when the head is zero, the system is saturated. Therefore, when the head is zero, k takes on its value of k sat. Okay? And then, as the head goes more and more negative, then the water content decreases. As the water content decreases, the conductivity should decrease. But this curve only gets to the residual water content at very, very negative pressures. So what's going to happen is, as the pressure becomes more negative, the hydraulic conductivity decays. Okay. So we can see the relationship then between the characteristic curve and how we would infer that we're basically reading off moisture contents. Here's a moisture content. So I take that same moisture content, and then I read off a pressure, and I associate then that pressure with that conductivity. So I can read it basically, start with a moisture content, get a conductivity, also get a, 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 a pressure, have our pressure for that moisture content and the conductivity. So these three curves really are consistent with each other. They're giving the same information. And this curve has very much the shape of an exponential decay. Now, this, so we have this simple function that when h equals 0, this takes on the value of 1. It gives us k equals k sat. That's what we like. And since h is negative, is a negative pressure, then as h becomes very, very negative, this thing goes to zero, and so the conductivity at minus infinity goes to zero. Now, how do we get these parameters? Well, this one, we're going to do a simple experiment using Darcy's law. So we'll fill up a column of, of our soil and pour water and see how much water goes through it to get the saturated conductivity. This alpha is really saying, at what pressure will the conductivity be significantly lower? So we're going to say, aha, this is going to be one over, you know, e to the minus one, so about 34%, at what value of h will this, should this take on a one? So, in other words, when h 
is about equal is about when theta is about equal to 75 percent of theta sat then conductivity drops off very quickly so conductivity is about one-third which means that one-third of k sat which means that the alpha h is about equal to minus one because e to the minus one is about one-third aha so then we can say that alpha so we'll call that h we'll just call that the air entry so that's when the air starts to really enter the soil. So alpha is approximately equal to one over the air entry pressure. So now we can relate then the value of the parameter alpha to a point off of the retention curve. And that's kind of satisfying because we know that the retention curve really tells us a lot about when the conductivity should decrease. And so we're gonna do a column experiment, as we did with the Van Genuchten expression, and we'll take this point, this value of alpha, right off of the water retention function. And in so doing, we get a very compact form of the conductivity function. So what are the, the great things? It's simple math. That, that equation we can work with, okay? So it has wonderful, uh, wonderful simplicity. But what are the downsides of it? So the, the, the cons of it, if you will. Well, number one, no hysteresis. We're saying that conductivity is a function of the pressure, but we know that if this were the draining curve, the, the filling curve might look like this. And so actually, at any one pressure, you could have two totally different moisture contents. The conductivity really is a function of the, the geometry of the water, so the water content. And so this function is only going to work for, in general, the draining curve. Okay? So you only want to use this expression on one curve, okay? So we don't have hysteresis. Um, and the other thing is that we know that when this water content stays fairly constant for a period for some set of pressures so it doesn't well represent the air entry pressure okay so what are we going to do about that we have this this function which starts dropping in conductivity as soon as h deviates from zero well, um, a, a gentleman, Rit Gemma, from Holland in 1965, said, why don't we take this function and just make it a little different? And he's going to say that K of H is going to be equal to K sat again, and it's going to have the exponential, and it's going to have the alpha, but it's going to be H minus H air entry. And this expression is only going to be used when h is greater than the absolute value of h is greater than or equal to the absolute value of h air entry. So all it's really doing is taking the same plot and shifting it. So now we're saying that up until h air entry, let's just say here, the conductivity will be saturated and then only you'll have the exponential decay after the air entry pressure. So that was Rajema's uh, modification so that in this region of the curve, we wouldn't be representing the system as being less permeable. So it has, it, it, it's wonderfully simple, it's easy to get the parameters, but it does not well represent hysteresis because we're saying that conductivity is a function of, of the pressure, which we know it's really a function of moisture content. And so we have to use it for a specific curve, it has to be calibrated just for the draining curve, for example. And also, it not represent air entry, but that can be fairly easily fixed by adding one more parameter, um, as Rich Emma did in 1965.